Easter project are these really adorable paper carrots and they're so easy to put together. This is just a piece of computer paper and I'm making it into a square and then I'm going to paint it with some of my orange acrylic paint. Get sloppy, I'm just going to paint that whole piece of paper. I don't know what it is about primitive Easter decor, but I absolutely love it and I'm always really drawn to it. Now I'm going to cut that square piece of orange paper now in half and then we're going to scrunch it up. You want to be careful. You don't want to rip the paper, but scrunch it up really well. Now we're going to get out some hand cream and we're going to work this into that piece of paper and it almost turns your paper into like a leather feel. I have a full tutorial of how to do this and with some projects that you can incorporate this into your DIYs with. I'll put that link down below in the description. You just have to be really careful in the beginning of this process that you don't rip your paper. Now we've got that hand cream all incorporated into that paper. I just got out my stamps and some ink and I'm just stamping on this orange piece of paper anywhere. It just has to look grubby and kind of primitive. Now I've got some dollar store twine and I'm wrapping it around my fingers six times. And this is going to be the top of our carrot. I'm gonna take another piece of twine and tie it at the base and then cut the top portion of the twine and unravel it and it will be ready to put in the top of our carrot. Once I have it all unraveled, I'm taking my comb and I'm brushing it out so it's a little bit more fluffy and I'm not gonna throw all those little bits and pieces out because that's gonna turn into stuffing for our carrot. Now we're gonna fold that so the points come together and we're going to get our hot glue gun and we're going to glue this together. I find the hot glue gun works the best for this project because you want it to dry really quickly and hold quickly. And then we're just gonna fold it up and we're going to have a cone shape. Now I have all kinds of this Easter plastic stuffing left over. I'm going to put that in the bottom and then once I have it almost full, remember that little bit that was left over from when we combed it out. I'm gonna st stick that in the top and then put our little tassel in there and then just secure it all together with another piece of twine, tie a knot in it, and then we're gonna trim the top edges off and we have created a really affordable, cute Easter primitive decor from a piece of paper, some twine, and some acrylic paint. Next project, some primitive Easter eggs. I found these at the thrift store. I think they're originally from the dollar store, but they're ugly. They're just plastic. We're gonna upcycle these into some beautiful primitive Easter eggs. I had this tissue paper in my stash, it's floral print, and we're gonna use our homemade Mod Podge. I have a recipe, I'll put the link down below for that video if you wanna make your own homemade Mod Podge. I'm just going to rip this tissue paper in strips and then we're gonna be ready to decoupage it. Now, I don't want the base of these eggs being that really vibrant green, so I'm going to paint them. I've got a scuff pad. I'm just scuffing it up a little bit so the paint will adhere better. And I'm gonna give you a little trick for painting these really quickly. Now, you could just spray paint these or you could paint them by hand, but it's really messy and it takes a long time. This is just a, a fast way. It's not perfect, but it's gonna work great for this project. Just putting it in a glass jar with a little bit of water, a little bit of acrylic paint, throwing the egg in it and shaking it. And it's covering that whole egg. And then I'm going to put it in a plastic container and use my heat gun and just shake the container, dry that egg, and that acrylic paint is going to stick on the egg. Now, it's not going to be permanent, but we're gonna decoupage over top of it and it will work for that. Now, the reason that I did is if we didn't have it painted white and then we decoupaged on top of it with this tissue paper, that green still would have shown through and I didn't want that to happen, so that's why I painted it. Now, I'm just gonna have fun here and I'm going to use those strips of tissue paper and decoupage these eggs. I set these in the sun and let them dry really well. And now I'm just taking a really light grit sandpaper and I'm just softening up all those little edges. And then I'm going to use a little bit of ink and just dab on a little bit of that distressed look, giving it that primitive Easter decor feel. And they're gonna be ready to display.
next upcycle that we're going to turn into some primitive decor is this frame that I picked up at the thrift store. I think it was 99 cents. I've had it for quite a while, but I was inspired today to turn it into something with a little bunny. So I've sanded down the frame a little bit and now I'm just painting it with some of my black homemade chalk paint. Let that dry. Now I've got a little bit of dirt and I'm going to rub this in after this black paint has dried. I'm gonna rub that dirt into the paint. It just kind of gives it that grubby feel, that old antique primitive feel. And once I've done all of that, I'm gonna clean up my mess and then I'm going to go back in with my sandpaper and sand all in those little corners and areas where it would have naturally aged. Now I still thought it needed just a little bit more. So I, in a video not that long ago, I did some DIY rub and buff, and this is really fun. It just kind of gives a nice shimmer to your projects. Uh, it's a really easy recipe to whip together. I'll put the link down below in the description for that. I'm just adding a little bit of it here and there on the frame and it finished it off really nice. Now we're going to coffee stain a piece of paper. This is a really easy way to coffee stain paper if you need a piece really quick. I have some hot water and some instant coffee in a little squirt bottle. Mix it up really well, spray it on your piece of paper, and then once it's completely dry, I like to press it with an iron because we're gonna put this to our printer and we want it nice and flat. I designed this graphic, it's in my Etsy store. It's so cute, this little primitive bunny. I sized it so it would fit the frame and now I'm gonna cut it out and we're gonna Mod Podge it onto that frame. I set it aside, let it dry completely, and now we're gonna put on a top coat. But I'm gonna do a little bit of a different process for putting the top coat on. If you take Mod Podge and dab it up and down so it's not smooth, you leave it kind of wrinkly and rippled, when it dries, it looks like an oil painting. It's kind of a cool technique. And it's just all applied now. We're gonna set it aside and let it dry. And here it is in the frame. Isn't this adorable? And it just has that rippled effect in the Mod Podge on top of my print. The frame turned out beautiful. What do you think? We all have little bits and pieces of fabric in our stash, and this is a perfect DIY to put together for primitive Easter decor. I coffee stained a piece of cotton, and now we're going to print on the fabric. I've got a piece of computer paper that I sprayed with some spray adhesive and I'm pressing it down into that piece of fabric and then we're going to feed it through our printer and print our image on it. And I've just cut off the edges. I have fed it through my printer, making sure when I put it in my printer that it's going to print on the fabric side. I'm just gonna cut it down to size while it's still on the paper because that makes it easier to cut and then I'm going to cut a piece of fabric the same size for the back of this. We're going to turn these into some bowl fillers. These are perfect to do for any holiday season and you can nestle them in around any of your decor and they look beautiful. These two rabbit prints are available in my Etsy store and I think they're so cute and have such a primitive um, vintage look to them. Now we're ready to peel that fabric off that piece of computer paper and we have our fabric that's got graphics printed on it. Now this is not washable, it's not permanent, it's for decor only. I'm going to roughen up the edges of this fabric again so it can have that primitive look and then we're going to hot glue these two together. It's going to turn out to be a little bit like a little tiny decor pillow. If you're enjoying this type of content, now's a perfect time to hit that like button. It really helps out my channel and supports me here and I really do appreciate it. We're now ready to get that stuffing in this little miniature primitive pillow. Again, I'm using that pink basket filling and it works perfect. You can also use rice or beans or shredded paper. Just get creative and Think what you can put inside for a filler. Then we're just going to take the hot glue gun and we're going to glue it all together. And who doesn't love 
Primitive Bunnies. These are adorable on the coffee stained fabric. It looks fantastic. Simple, easy, primitive DIY for Easter. Okay, I think I've left my favorite for last. This is just a glass jar that I saved out of the recycling bin. I haven't worried about cleaning the label off any because this is gonna be turning into a primitive jar. I sprayed it with a light coating of some black spray paint. And then once it was dry, I'm going in now with my black chalk paint and I'm just dabbing it all over the lid and the jar. There is a little bit of a technique to painting glass and I have a full tutorial for that. I'll put that link down below in the description. This is the graphic that I'm going to use on my glass jar. I'm just ripping it edges down to size to fit the jar and then I'm taking a little bit of ink just to distress it up, make it look primitive. This graphic's available in my Etsy store if you wanna grab it and give this DIY a try. Now I'm putting a coat of Mod Podge on the top of this before we put it on our jar. It's just gonna give it more of a rustic look. Once I got the Mod Podge on, I decided that I wanted to add a little tiny bit of pop of color to the carrots, the top of the graphic, just using my acrylic paint and painting on some orange and some green. Now we're going to decoupage it onto that glass jar. I'm just adding the Mod Podge onto the back of that piece of paper and we're gonna center it exactly where we want it. Now the thing with primitive decor, it always has that little bit of a grubby look to it or aged or really vintage, well-loved look. And that's what I'm trying to achieve with this glass jar. Now that all of that black chalk paint has dried, we've got the label on, I'm painting on a layer of Mod Podge and then I'm sprinkling on dirt. You can use dirt, you can also use cinnamon. It gives a really great effect too. And sprinkling it right into that wet Mod Podge. Once we have it completely covered, I'm gonna set it aside and let it dry. Once it was dry, I wiped off all the little bits of dirt that were loose, and then I'm sponging on the top coat of Mod Podge to seal it all up. Now let's really finish this off primitive style. I've got this coffee stained cheesecloth. We're gonna cut out a piece a little bit bigger than the lid. We're gonna drape it over top of that lid, tie it on with some twine, and we've taken a glass jar from the recycling bin and upcycled it into a beautiful piece of Easter home decor. So if you have any glass jars or bottles in your stash waiting to be upcycled, this is a fantastic project to try. I'm gonna show you today how I created this Easter sign from a scrap piece of wood with some Mod Podge graphics. I'm just using a scrap piece of pine I had and we're gonna paint it and give it a really chippy layered look. First coat, some black chalk paint. Now I've got out my Vaseline and I'm gonna put some Vaseline all around the outside of this piece of wood. Wherever you put Vaseline, the paint won't stick to it and it helps give it a real chippy look. Now we're gonna layer up a few different Easter colors First layer, we're gonna use some pink acrylic paint. Now I've got out my pillar candle. It's just a wax candle from the dollar store and I'm going to aggressively put it all around the edges and all over the piece of wood. This is also gonna act a lot like the Vaseline and the paint won't stick to it, giving it a really chippy look. Now we're gonna layer up some more colors. We've got a beautiful yellow and I love this turquoise. I'm gonna put on some hairspray now. Hairspray will create a little bit of a crackle finish on your projects, just gives it that aged look. I put a really thick coat of that hairspray on, let it dry completely, and now I'm putting a top coat of white acrylic paint. I find the acrylic paint works the best with the hairspray technique to make it crackle. If you haven't seen my tutorial on how to do crackle paint with hairspray, I'll put a link down below in the description and you can check it out after you watch this. I'm gonna get out my heat gun and I'm going to dry that acrylic paint and as you'll dry it, you'll see all those crackles appear from the hairspray underneath. I love incorporating all these different techniques to take a brand new piece of wood and make it look old and vintage and then turn it into a sign. It just makes it look more authentic and unique and a one of a kind piece. 
and it's starting to dry and you can see the crackles start to appear already. With the hairspray, it's just like a fine crackle that'll appear. We are now ready to scrape it down and get all those colors showing through. This is just a razor scraper that I'm using. You can use any kind of scraper and there's no method to this. You just do it and keep scraping until you get the desired look that you like. You're gonna scrape through the hairspray layer, you're gonna scrape through the candle wax layer, and you're gonna scrape through the Vaseline layer, and you're gonna see all those colors come peeking through. If you only want one layer of color, then you just put on your base color, and then you add your technique to distress, and then paint on top of it, and you'll just have the contrast of the two colors. But I find that's not very much fun. I love adding all kinds of layers, all kinds of different colors, and it makes that piece of wood look like it's been painted many times over throughout the years. And then to turn it into a sign, I think it looks fantastic. And here is the result. I think it's so worth it to take a little bit of extra time and do these steps when you're prepping for a sign and you can see the turquoise, you can see the yellow, you can see the pink, you can see the black. And of course, this is what the wood looked like before, and this is what I turned it into. Okay, now we're ready to turn this into a sign. I'm gonna use this graphic. I designed it, it's available in my Etsy store if you wanna use it to make one of these signs yourself. Make sure you use the code SAVE50 because you get 50% off all of my graphics. And this is printed on regular computer paper on my LaserJet printer. And if you design your own graphics, you have to make sure that you reverse your text. Now to make the sign, we're going to use my Mod Podge mat. And you're going to just apply it over that whole graphic. You don't want it on too thick, just a nice light coat over that whole piece of paper. Okay, now we're ready to put it on the sign. You want to make sure that you have it exactly where you want it, because once you place it down, you can't move it. And then we're going to rub out all the bubbles and all the wrinkles. Make sure you have it pressed really well into that wood. We've let it sit for 24 hours and now I've taken a damp rag and I've just dampened the graphics until you can start to see them show through the paper. And then with your fingers, you're just going to rub off all of the paper. And as you do that, your graphic will show through and you'll have a wonderful sign. All the papers rubbed off and I'm gonna put a little bit of a finishing touch to it I'm going to paint those carrots with a little bit of orange paint I've just got some orange acrylic paint and a little paintbrush and I'm just gonna just put a little bit on those carrots just so it gives it a pop of color and then I'm just gonna take a little bit of a rag and just dab into that orange paint, just so you can see the graphic through it. So it's just giving it just like a tint of orange. If you have a steady hand, this is a great way of adding a little pop of color to just your black graphics and just make them pop a little bit more. I added a little bit of green on the stem and we're ready to seal it up. I'm gonna seal it up with my polyacrylic sealer, water-based, and a matte finish. And there you have the finished sign. I drilled holes in each end and then added some jute string to hang it from. I think it just kind of gives it that cute little effect. And I think it turned out fantastic. Taking that extra time and creating that chippy layered paint look underneath your signs, so worth it. I'm going to show you some treasures that I found thrifting to add to my Easter decor. The first thing that I look for are homemade doilies. I love looking for doilies and I found this whole bag of linens and doilies for $3.99. I had a dishcloth set, uh, in there that I can use for later, some Christmas coasters, but look at the Easter colors in these homemade doilies. These are a great find because we can add these into our Easter decor to put underneath little decor pieces and it's going to make them really pop. And then I found the cutest little duck, but it's really dated looking and I don't like all the different colors. So I got out my acrylic paint and some baking soda and I'm going to mix those two together and it's going to create a really nice textured paint to apply on the duck and it's going to give it more of a ceramic look.
a really great technique to do on a lot of upcycling projects and it just takes something that's really dated and makes it look modern again and I'm just going to brush it on over that whole duck then we're going to let it dry and then I'm going to put on a second coat. When I'm doing my second coat with this technique, I always like to go in with a sponge and it just creates a little bit more texture just by stippling it up and down. And this little duck had lots of words and little uh, pieces that were carved out of it and it's just helping to smooth it out. And here is this duck that now looks modern and looks like a piece of stone. I found this little rabbit wooden cutout. I imagine it was probably from the dollar store originally. I'm gonna take off the little bow and we're gonna give it a little bit of an update. I'm gonna sand it first with some 80 grit sandpaper. See if I can get some of that pink paint off the bottom because there was a little bit of a ridge there. Once I have that all done, I am going to paint it all white. Using my acrylic paint and painting over that whole bunny. Now that everything's dry, I have this beautiful napkin that I picked up in Winners, and I'm just gonna use the top ply. I'm gonna take away those two bottom plies, but I'm not gonna throw those out. We're gonna set those aside because I can always use those on another project, especially to make custom napkins. And we're just gonna cut out a piece that's a little bit bigger than our bunny. And if you want to transfer a napkin onto a DIY project and you don't want it to wrinkle and bubble, this is a really great technique if you have not tried it. Get some saran wrap or cling wrap and cut it a little bit bigger than your project. You don't want a lot hanging off the edges because it'll just melt down and make a bit of a mess. So you want to get it as close to the size of the bunny as you can as long as it's out to the edges. Then you're just going to lay your napkin on top of it. And then I'm going to put on a sheet of parchment paper and I'm going to use my iron on the highest setting with no steam. We're going to bond this all together. And this works really well on napkins. If you get anything a bit thicker than a napkin, it doesn't work as well, but get into your stash and give this technique a try. Just checking to make sure that all the edges were bonded really well and then I'm just going in with a little piece of sandpaper and sanding away the extra. We're going to glue her little necklace back on and we've really updated this bunny that we found at the dollar at the thrift store that was probably from the dollar store and made it really cute and of course you can display it on one of those doilies. The next DIY that I'm going to do was this really cute little wagon, but it was really dated and I knew I could make it beautiful again. It just had a couple screws in the bottom where these flower pots were attached and they unscrewed really easy. Not gonna lose those screws though, we're gonna put them aside. And then we're going to freshen this up with some paint. I got out my homemade white chalk paint and a sponge. Because this has so many intricate little pieces, the sponge worked best. I could have spray painted it, but I wanted to have the texture of that chalk paint to not, I wanted it to just kind of pop a little bit more. So sponge worked really well. Now we're gonna go back in because I wanna give it a little bit of a rusty look. I love this technique. I'm using some cinnamon and some of my Mod Podge and I'm just going to dab on the Mod Podge anywhere on this little wagon where it probably would have maybe naturally rusted. Just dab a little bit here and there and then sprinkle on that cinnamon. Once the Mod Podge dries, that cinnamon is going to stay where it was put and it's just gonna give that faux rust effect. Once everything is completely dry and we've put the cinnamon everywhere where we want, just take a paintbrush, brush away the extra, and this is what we've got. Now these pots need to be refreshed too. I kind of made a terracotta color with some orange and brown, and we're going to freshen up the pots. And after I had that done, we're also going to freshen up the little flowers. Thank you. 
I thought the wagon needed a little sign. So I had this wooden cutout that I picked up at the dollar store and I printed off a little graphic on my laser printer, making sure to reverse the text, cut it down to size so it fit on that little wooden piece. And I'm doing my Mod Podge reverse transfer method. Using my Mod Podge, I let it sit for 24 hours and now I just dampened the paper with a little bit of water and rubbing it off and the graphic staying on that little piece of cutout. And we're gonna just add it to our wagon. Perfect finishing touch and we're going to put our pots back in the wagon and we've taken this dated piece and we've brightened it up for our spring and our Easter decor with just a few simple little tricks and tips and easy to do and of course you can display it on one of those beautiful doilies always so many cups and saucers at the thrift store. I picked this one up, it was $5.99, but it was actually 25% off of that. I'm using my E6000 and a little bit of hot glue, and we're going to glue the cup and the saucer together. And of course, I did some research beforehand, and this was not worth any money, so we don't need to worry about that. But we're now gonna turn it upside down, put a pillar candle in the top, quick and easy way to create some spring or Easter decor from the thrift store and then put it on one of those doilies. And I also found these little vases, but I thought that I wanted them all white. So I got out some of my homemade white chalk paint and I'm going to paint in between all of those little flowers and a couple of the leaves had actually been chipped off. So this is just gonna help it blend a little bit better too. Did both phases, they took two coats and then the last coat I went back in with the sponge to give it a little bit more texture. And then once everything was completely dry, again, I sealed it up with some polycrylic sealer and we've taken these two dated little vases and that had some little broken pieces and stuff on it and made it look more modern. Easter decor on a budget, simple. Some things don't need to be upcycled. They're just beautiful as is and they're really nice to add into your Easter decor. I found this yellow little vase and these faux Easter flowers. Um, I know they kind of are maybe a little bit tacky, but they blend in with the Easter colors perfect and just put them in that little vase and I'm gonna nestle this in on my table for Easter dinner. And I also found this cute little vase with the bunny on the side and I just put some faux flowers in it and it's perfect for Easter decor also. So you don't have to spend a lot of money to decorate for the different seasons. Head to the thrift store, look around, you're gonna find so much stuff. This next DIY is really fun and it's a great way to personalize some DIYs for Easter. These would be great for the kids to put their eggs in and I'm using a Easter graphic but you can also do their names like I said and personalize it. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clean it up with some alcohol so my graphics will stick really well and these graphics that I'm using today can be found in my Etsy store. I'll put the link down below in the description and we're going to do a transfer method using label sheets. What we want is that glossy sheet of paper and that's what we're going to do our transfer on. I'm gonna load it into my printer, shiny side being printed on, and this is a laser printer. This will only work on a laser printer, unfortunately. This transfer method will not work with an inkjet printer. And then I have some shelf liner that I picked up at the dollar store. We're gonna cut these graphics down to size a little bit and then we're gonna cut the shelf liner to be the same size as the graphic. You wanna make sure that you're not touching that piece of paper that we printed on, that shiny side, because you will rub off the toner. Take that shelf liner, place it on that graphic really carefully, we don't wanna smear it, and then press it down really firm. And this is just like magic. This is probably one of my favorite transfer methods and it's so easy to do. And if you look at the thrift store, I always find those label sheets there for a fraction of the price than buying new. Now I'm just gonna trim them down to size so it's nice and neat and it's a square. And then when we peel away that shelf liner, the graphic stays on it and then we can apply it to our little pails. And that's what I was talking about, about maybe personalizing them with your grandchild or your child's name. This is such a fun DIY to do at Easter time.
Today I'm gonna to do a dollar store DIY. I picked up this wooden easel and canvas at the dollar store and this yellow acrylic paint and these pretty springtime Easter theme napkins. And I'm gonna use my Mod Podge matte finish. I'm gonna give my wooden easel a coat of the yellow acrylic paint um, just to make it kind of look springy and brighten it up a little bit. Now I've taken all the plies off the napkin, so this is only the one top ply, and I'm gonna put a piece of parchment paper over top of it and give it a little bit of an iron to get rid of the creases in the napkin. I'm just preparing my napkin so I can attach it to a piece of computer paper and I'm gonna put it through my printer so I can print graphics right on the napkin. This is such a fun technique and I've made actually a couple videos on some different ideas that you can do with napkins to make your own. And this one I just thought would be really pretty to do a springtime theme on the canvas. Now I'm gonna take my crafter's tape and I'm just gonna put a little bit of the tape around the edges of the computer paper just to adhere to the napkin so it stays together when I put it through the printer. Now this technique will work with an inkjet printer or a laser jet printer. I'm gonna center it right where I want it on the napkin and then press it down firmly in place. And then I'm gonna trim it all around the edges to get rid of all that extra napkin. And now it's all ready to put through the printer. I'm just gonna load it into my laser jet printer and I'm gonna turn it upside down because that's the way that it needs to go through to print on the napkin. And it went through perfect and looks beautiful. Now I've cut it off of the computer paper and it's ready to go onto our canvas. I'm gonna take my Mod Podge mat and I'm going to put quite a thick coat over the whole canvas. You don't want it too thin because when we iron it onto the canvas, you want the Mod Podge to melt into the napkin. So put it on quite thick and we're gonna do two coats, letting it dry completely in between. Now the Mod Podge is completely dry and we're ready to adhere the napkin to it. So you're gonna place it on the canvas and put it where you want it. Make sure it's centered really well because you're not gonna be able to move it afterwards. Make sure it's centered and then you're gonna put a piece of parchment paper on top of it. And now you're gonna take your iron. I have it set at six with no steam and you're just gonna iron the napkin onto the canvas and you're just gonna go slow Go from edge to edge, make sure you get every little bit of the a napkin to make sure that it adheres really well. And this technique is so easy and you very rarely get any wrinkles or bubbles. And I also find that when you're using your inkjet printer, it doesn't have a tendency to run. Now you can use a little bit of hairspray on the napkin if you are using an inkjet just to prevent it from running if it does but most of the time I find that I don't have a problem. Okay, we're all done and it looks like it's adhered really well. You can just check the corners and make sure that it's uh, bonded really well and then we're ready for the next step. I'm just taking my 80 grit sanding block and I'm just gonna sand all along the edges of that napkin and as you're doing that, you'll see that it'll make a really nice clean edge. There's so many different themes that you can do with this. Um, you could do for baby showers, for birthdays, for a welcome sign at your front door. So many possibilities and so many different napkins that you can choose from. They would also be really great to make for wedding decor. Perfect, and now I'm just gonna seal it for the last step. And for my finished coat, I like to use a polyacrylic sealer. This is a matte finish and it just seals it really nice and makes it really easy if you ever have to dust it. You can use Mod Podge for your top coat if you prefer. And there you have the cutest little Easter springtime decor piece all from the dollar store that I only made for maybe a couple dollars and it'll look cute displayed out 
for your whole spring season. Never throw out your eggshells near Easter because I'm going to show you a really cute DIY that you can do with some of those eggshells. I have this little wooden cutout from the dollar store and a candle that I picked up in a bag from the thrift store and we're going to melt that candle down. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to glue that eggshell onto the bottom of that wooden cutout. Now I've carefully cleaned the eggshell with some soap and water and I'm being very careful just pressing it gently onto that wooden cutout because it is really fragile as we know it's an eggshell and we don't want to break it at this point. I saved the wick from that candle that I melted down. I'm going to put a little dab of hot glue on the bottom and then I'm going to glue it into the bottom of that eggshell. This is a great way to repurpose those old candles that have only been burnt halfway down and we can make them into a new candle. I'm going to very carefully pour that melted wax into the eggshell until it's just about at the top and then we're going to set it aside and let it all become solid. This is how beautiful it is. These would be great to display in amongst your Easter decor and it's really affordable to do and it's really cute. I'm going to show you another way to upcycle some eggshells into some really cute Easter decor. I've got some eggshells and I'm just going to scrunch them right down and I've also got some chalk paint. We're going to add the eggshells once I've got them really crushed fine into that chalk paint. This is going to create some really nice texture in that chalk paint. I'm going to stir it well with a little skewer and then I'm just going to dab it up and down on a glass bottle that I saved from the recycling bin and it's much easier to dab this up and down you're going to keep the texture of the eggshells better and I've got one coat on then I put a second coat on I sealed it up with some polyacrylic sealer and isn't this gorgeous just using some eggshells that we would have thrown out otherwise and turned it into a beautiful vase for Easter. Another cute way that you can use eggshells for your Easter decor is to plant a little succulent in it. I had these succulents in a bigger pot and I'm just dividing them up a little bit and very gently pushing them into that little eggshell. And then we're going to, again, I've got a little wooden cutout that I picked up at the dollar store. I actually put a piece of scrapbooking paper on top of it to give it a little bit more color going to glue that eggshell on top and we've got a cute little succulent in an eggshell that we can again display in amongst our Easter decor and then afterwards you can just crush up that eggshell and add it into a bigger pot. So every time you're making eggs now you're going to have these ideas in the back of your head of all these DIYs that you can do with it. Next one, another glass bottle that I saved from the recycling bin. I've got out my Mod Podge mat and I'm going to apply the Mod Podge right to that glass bottle and I've got some of that eggshell that I've ground up and I'm just going to sprinkle it into that wet Mod Podge. It's going to stick really well and it's going to create that texture on the bottle but it's a little bit different than the painted one because you're still going to be able to kind of see through the glass opposed to when we painted that bottle white. Once everything was completely dry I got that polyacrylic sealer and gave it a really good spray to seal it all up and I'm actually propagating a little plant in it perfect way to add a touch of spring to your Easter decor. I hope you found some inspiration in today's video. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and we'll see you in the next one.